Right, how's it going? Um, my name's Ryan, as said, lecturer here at Alberta University, and uh, I'm just jamming. I am uh, basically interested in co-creation and generative processes between uh, group activity and, of course, uh, obviously education, students, and all that. There, and obviously fields beyond that. But I'm, I'm here today because I want to share my jam story so far um, in that it's not just served me well, but it's kind of opened my mind and it's played pretty much into how I am as a person, which is, uh, well, first of all, I have to admit something to you, uh, and I hope you forgive me, but I'm here by mistake. Uh, and that's not just this room or this place, this little red carpet talking to you guys. Genuinely, even in Dundee, uh, or probably on this planet, for all we know. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's so central to the kind of ideas that I want to kind of uh, to discuss with you today in that, you know, I like being thrown in at the deep end and I kind of seem to survive there best. I wrote a five-page transcript for today and absolutely hated it, so I thought, no, no way. I'll tell a different story, something that's probably more truthful and more honest. Um, and I hope that some of you find some value in that because uh, I think there's something really precious and delicate at the center. Um, and it's probably a lot more to do with, you know, why are you here? I don't mean that in a nasty way. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's about why we as people, we decide to group up or take interest in things together or to share ideas or to generate things together. There is this wonderful magic, this little spark that's gooey and soft and precious that kind of glues us all together and over the last sort of four or five years as I've been taking part in these kind of this uh, phenomenon of game jams I've seen witness to it um, been witness to it wrong word um, and more and more as we kind of uh, toil and experiment and interrogate that process of game jamming more the fantastic stuff just reveals itself so uh, Carpets are strange, um, <laughs> um, but it's you know it's 2012. I'm I've just been made full-time lecturer at Alberta University. Um, pretty much saying the same thing. What am I doing here? I'm here by mistake. What? What lecturer? Um, and you know after sort of a few years of part-time work, just uh, teaching here and there in the arts, uh, 3D graphics design, um, they're like, okay, well you're full-time now, and months are rolling on by. It's all going well. Um, I'm still kind of figuring out what I do, though. I know I like drawing. I know I like painting. I know I like teaming up with people and making things. In fact, I start realizing that I almost work a lot better when I team up with people and make things. It's like, okay, that's nice. Don't know what to call this yet. I'm pretty much not an academic yet. I'm still at the ac accidental academic stage, not written many papers, still not reading enough books, and uh, generally probably getting told off by students for not uh, showing up to a lecture on time. So, fair enough. Okay. I get invited by uh, a team of people at the uh, Glasgow Caledonia. Um, they have a team of people people there, there's members of IGDA, and they're like, hey, do you fancy running a game jam, Ryan? <laughs> game jam? Is that a laugh? What? What are you talking about? What on earth is a game jam? It's the word jam and game together. That doesn't make sense. Is this something I put on my toast? Um, <laughs> Damn, I love toast. <laughs> so, um, so it's, I'm hungry already. I'm like, okay, I'm on a train to Glasgow. I'm away to meet these people. And they, uh, they bring me into this room and there's lots of people. There's a big square table and there's me, chubby little Ryan. Jam. Give me it. Um, they're like, well, uh, I was like, what? I'll be honest with you, uh, fellas and ladies, and um, I have no idea what a game jam is. Um, I didn't even bother Googling it at this point, you know. I'm, uh, for all the love of technology I have, I try to stay away from it when I can. Um, and they're like, well, Ryan, you'll not believe this, but we squeeze lots of people into your room for 48 hours and hope games come out of it. <laughs> I was like, what? 48 hours to make a game? And I'm like, oh, absolutely. In fact, this has been going on for quite some time more than quite some time. I was like, okay, right, well, um, I'm game. I'll give it a go and see what happens. So following sort of months pass, it's 2013, and we're running the first kind of uh, uh, global game jam site uh, in Aberté, Dundee. Um, I've got some sort of students involved. We've got around about 50 people. I have no idea what's going on. I'm running around like a clueless chicken. We eventually get this thing organized, and then it happens. 
And during those 48 hours, something changes in me. One, I've run out of any potential energy to kind of run the event itself. It's getting into that late night stage. And I'm like, I think I'm hallucinating here, but I'm not. It's people genuinely have working prototypes after like the first day. And they're not just working prototypes. They're some of the most original, brilliant, fun, fantastical, strange, controversial in some cases, things I've ever seen. Some of them don't even make sense. I'm like, what are you trying to do here? I'm confused enough as it is. Um, this is, it's a game you play with Twitter, Ryan, duh. What? Um, and, right, okay, fair enough. So, uh, next day, rolls on, they're starting to finish, to get people in. At this stage, we're still running it on a kind of competitive level. There's prizes to be won. Um, and before I start singing the Funhouse theme song, it's, it was more like there was judges came in and best prizes for certain awards, whether it was code or art or gameplay mechanics or uh, things that solved uh, the potential theme even better. It's like, fair enough, that's kind of cool. Um, but it was, it, it was just opened my mind, it blew my head off that, you know, these are you know, students, you're user inexperienced in terms of uh, workplace, yet you're doing better things than, than I've seen outside. I'd worked for the BBC at one point, and my God, they were boring. Um, I'd seen something far more fresh in here. And <laughs> it was like, so it just totally blew my mind. Absolutely gobsmacked. I was like, do you know what? We're doing this all the time. Every, every year, we're having one of these. And it rolls on like that, and it gets better and better and better. We start to change the format. We start to kind of change things about it. You know, the attitudes we have to it, the the all night thing goes out the window. The, uh, the we start to introduce social hours. We talk about eating healthier foods. So I'm one to talk. Um, that's why I talk about healthier foods. I'm hoping that you guys will solve my diet problems one time. Um, and fantastic. This is all going so well. But it's like it's. It's got that format issue. We're like, well, this is great. So we, we're shoving people in a room. It's nothing new, um, but the format never really changes. It's the global game jam and that's its own thing. Fair enough. But I was like, well, what if we, what if we change it? Why does a game jam have to be that way? And that will probably come to later because something exciting starts to happen when we start viewing game jams as something else. So, uh, some context for you is game jams, or the term that they're called game jams anyway, starts around 2002, somewhere in San Francisco, like all good things in the modern world these days. Um, it's nothing new. There are events that have existed for decades that are, you know, throw people in a room and see what comes out. There's hackathons and there's chiasmas and um, all sorts of horror. I don't know. They've all got complicated words. Why was this different? And of course, as explained by uh, Chris Hecker, it's, it's a lot to do with using the phrase game jam. He says this was never meant to be something competitive. It's 2002, the Xbox has just been released. Microsoft's brand new flagship console there to challenge the PlayStation 2. Grand Theft Auto 3 is the biggest success ever and people are worried that their children are beating other people up for no reason and it's all strange. It's a strangely exciting time for the games industry itself, but not in an ideal sense. By this stage, we've got a lot of industry veterans out there who are quietly frustrated with the lack of innovation in the games industry. They're becoming slightly more vocal about it. There's other things going wrong in the games industry alongside that, but you can't tackle all problems at once. So these guys get together and they form the Zero with Indie Game Jam. And like I said, specifically to create the best games that they can rather than a competition, which was about separating people out and making someone better than the rest. This wasn't about that. It was about technical innovation. This one in particular was technology driven. Um, and since then, they've rolled on to become, you know, there's a lot of indie game jams out there. There are thousands of game jams out there. Next year, that's 17 years ago. That's absolutely terrifying to me. Um, and I'm only on board with this recently. Um, but the format itself, while certain people do twist and change it in different directions, it's really healthy and it's fun. And what really starts to interest me is people that start taking elements of that format and going, well, why does it have to be in a room? Why can't it be in a tree house? Well, I personally have a natural affinity against gravity. My only weakness, I'll have you know. Um, Okay, well, what about on a train? 
was game jams on a train. In fact, I might even get on one when I'm heading over to California in two weeks' time. There's a 52-hour game jam on a train. Okay, fair enough, that sounds fun. But there's game jams in schools. They're all over universities. There's even been a game jam in the White House. How cool is that? So what is it about it? What, why are these becoming so popular? And for me, I think it's a marketing issue. It's all about that phrase again, game jam. It's not saying technical blah, 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 come along and make us things. It's saying game jam. That's very fun words to say, the way they're paired off. It's an automatic invitation. It makes no assumptions about you. It says, hey, come and make some games. It's going to be really fun. And it's great. It's um, not without its criticisms. I could stand here um, for hours. I really could and tell you about the pros and cons of game jams. And you know, good things, bad things, they are there. There's no point trying to disguise that. But I'm not here to do that. I'm here to tell you because I want you guys to believe whether or not you participated in game jams before, that you can do it in the future. You don't even have to be a game maker. You don't even have to be a game developer. If you're a hobbyist, and of course our students do as well. But outside of that, there's other realms. I, uh, I ran a little uh, experiment this year, um, secret experiments, because that's what I do. I'm a mad scientist. Um, I'm just missing the hair. And um, I invited, <laughs> call me cruel. You can call me names later if you wish. Um, it was like, my friend Suzanne, Suzanne! And she's like, yes, Ryan, what do you want? I was like, I want to, I'm inviting you to this thing, you're going to show up and it's going to be great. Okay, now Suzanne doesn't have a game development background, doesn't even really like digital tools that much, sometimes uses them, but she's an amazing illustrator and works mostly with traditional media. And I was like, wouldn't it be absolutely hilarious if we threw Suzanne into a game jam and seen what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it almost backfired. First night, Ryan, this is horrible and I want to leave. <laughs> I was like, oh, what have I done? <laughs> this has all gone out the window. So um, I was like, well, well, let's, let's, let's stick it out a few, few more hours, get a couple of other things in place. It was all good. Day two, Suzanne starts to see her work, her artwork, which has existed in little bits of animation here and there, but largely on other traditional surfaces or real world places. Sees her, her work come to life inside this brand new newborn computer game prototype that's less than six hours old. Imagine it's birth to the world and now she sees it. Her eyes, her face lit up. She was like, oh my God, it's moving, it's moving. And I was like, yes, yes, it's moving. Um, and it was like some strange Frankenstein moment, but in the most fantastic way possible. And again, this starts ticking more boxes for me. So since then, I've invited other people here and there and placed them in these groups just to see how they react. And I record all this because I'm interested in how non-game makers become part of game making. It's not always easy, but again, it's about that deep end. It's about being there by accident. It's about making mistakes and somehow ending up on a small red carpet in front of lovely, attractive people and wondering, oh my God, are they here to eat me? Um, but it's not like that at all. So. In the time since then, I'll wrap up in the next minute, um, we've toyed with game jams, pulled them in different directions. We've done game jams that challenge gameplay mechanics, that challenge what controllers are, that challenge who can take part. But game jams are much more than that. They're a rich landscape of possibilities. But at the center of it, the thing I really want you to take away is that they really do bring out the best in us because they're fun and they're playful. We're all jamming in different ways and in different parts of our lives. We just don't even realize it. But when you harness it and realize that sometimes just throwing you and a group of friends into a situation that demands an answer, you'll come out with some of the best results you'll not even realize you're capable of. It's absolutely fantastic. So to finish off, game jams, they're everywhere. If you see one, try and take part, even if you're not a game maker, because game making, if you think about it, just like uh, uh, Heather Chaplin said in 2012, I believe, it's about culture. You don't just make games, you're making culture. So you're not just game makers, you're culture makers. And taking part in that is rich and fun 
and important, and we can solve other problems. So I'll finish off there. Okay? Thank you for listening.